Hello and welcome to Gen Con 2015, the qualifier round of the Sentinel Tactics Tournament that we're having here at Gen Con 2015. I'm Christopher Bedell and this is Chris Burton. Hi hey everybody, it's time for another round of tournaments. It's exciting. So today and tomorrow we are doing the qualifier tournament that will, the first and second place teams from that will lead into, will be making their way into the championship tournament which will be happening on Saturday and the finals on Sunday. On Saturday and Sunday that championship tournament will be everybody who has won or placed in second place in the previous tournaments leading up to here. And if you've been watching along, you know it's a lot of really high powered teams. There'll be some interesting competition and a lot of, uh, a lot of people who have honed their skills before coming back. I've seen a lot of the, the tr we've seen a lot of the teams already and those teams are all, they have a lot of information, they've done a lot of practicing, a lot of studying of their opponents, so I'm really excited about that. But today we're talking about new teams. Today we're here to see brand new teams that we've never seen before and you've never seen before. Um, some of those teams, I've got some team names here and there's some exciting names. Oh, we've yes. got uh, Aqua Skull, Team Discovery Channel, Crash Course, The Inconsolables, Citizen Wings, Sweat, and Beers, the Quantum Interns, the Newbies, and the Free Agents. But the first match that we're going to be watching today on the casting table is the Free Agents versus the Aqua Skull. So, uh, we're still getting ready for that. Um, we might have some brackets here to show you soon, uh, but if not, we'll be able to at least go to the table. And they're currently discussing some finer points of rules, so we should be able to go to them pretty soon here, though. Now, do we know if these is a team that uh, signed up here, or did they come in as a group, or did there's just three random people who made up? So a little bit of everything. Uh, we have some teams that signed up in advance. We have some teams that came here as teams to play together. And we even have a couple of teams made up of individuals that met for the first time here. Oh, excellent. Um, here you can see at the table, uh, we've got everybody ready to go, and it looks like we're about ready for the coin toss. Uh, you see Luther there uh, wearing the Play Power Draw shirt. Luther is one of the designers, uh, and uh, he's actually got a quick question, and then we're going to get started. Um, so um, we are going to make that happen. Uh, you can see we have got a couple of teams put together here. <laughs> and currently they are looking for a coin for the coin toss. <laughs> No, I actually saw these uh, the guys on screen right now practicing earlier with Absolute Zero. Oh, good. And so I, I really hope they're willing to use them because I, I think he gets far too f far too little play in the tournament. So I, I, I want to see more of them. Yeah, I agree. So it looks like we're ready for the coin toss. Um, and so Luther is our uh, – that's true. Phones have got to go away. Uh, so th we're going to be going to the coin toss here. So Last-minute tweets. It's time for the coin toss. Do it now. All right. Tails it is. I know which I'd pick. Yeah? Yep. First uh, first draft, first turn. First draft, first turn. Well, hey, that's what they took. So you must be onto something. That's because I'm sure they have a perfect strategy for annihilating their opponents just in that first turn. The shock value of that alone will win them the match. Okay. I like to see it. I personally prefer playing second because a you get to see what they're drafting and you get to react to them so i think that i think reactive drafting and reactive playing is important so they so on the tron was our first band citizen don second band no omnitron no citizen don all right they're picking their heroes Come on, operative. Okay, I like that we're conferring, making plans together. Hey, oh, there we go. For me. Can they hear you? <laughs> I hope not. Oh, I mean, likely. Though, if you ever wanted a hero for a first round shock value, the operative's not bad. She's pretty good. It's operative and tachyon. So, if we get a top down shot of the map, you can see that the starting teams cannot, and their positions, they cannot see each other at all. There's a volcano in between them, and there's a little bit of cover on the sides, too. Um, and I'm interested to see what the teams do to work around that. Do they go straight through the volcano? Do they work around to try to fight from the cover? Uh, it's, it'll be interesting to see what happens. Uh, all right, Baron Blade just got drafted. Beacon. Beacon is up. Some good choices here for a very strong offense. Uh, 
So currently the free agents, uh, Aqua Skull has drafted Unity, the Operative, and Baron Blade, and the free agents have dra drafted Beacon and Tachyon, and they're picking their last character now. Now, with both Unity and the Operative, my hope is that they'll pick Ambuscade and just go after Unity from, from behind. Eh, sure. I, I think Ambuscade currently is a little bit overplayed. I think he's good. He's a, a good character, but right now I think he's seeing more play, and there's characters that should be seeing that level of play that we're not seeing as much of. So. I absolutely won't deny that, but for this specific situation, I, I think that Ambuscade is a very strong choice. Going after Unity since both Baron Blade and Operative are so strong. Yeah. Yep, that's fair. All right, free agents need to pick their last character. What's it going to be? Bunker. Bunker it is. Solid choice. All right. That's, that, is a, that is a great team. Beacon, Tachyon, and Bunker against Baron Blade, the Operative, and Unity. Um, so the, the players are going to be getting their characters now. They're going to be getting their, their cards and their panels. And they're um, getting all the stuff out so they'll be able to set up for the tournament. What do you think, Chris? Where are you going to go with this? You know, I think that any team that has both Baron Blade and the Operative on it is That's a, a really, strong, really team. strong team. And, be, and uh, Unity being able to support them with, say, Champion Bot. Uh, that's exactly what I was thinking, is Champion Bot and then maybe even Turret Bot, just in case anybody tries to get a little bit too close. And it, you know, leaving Turret Bot back, having Unity and Turret Bot hanging out in the backfield by themselves um, is, is a pretty safe bet, because it's like, sure, if somebody tries to come around and go for Unity, they're going to see it coming. They don't have anybody with really bizarre mobility. Right. Um, so... Now, the other thing that you could do with Unity, though, is if you wanted to do a Speedbot reconfigure, a Swiftbot rather reconfigure, you could send Swiftbot out and then curse bloat it into Turretbot, which is uh, honestly, that's one of my favorite openers. Now, with this particular map, what I would do is keep Unity in the backfield and have. Depending on how Baron Blade rolls his movement or how the operative roll their movement, I would try and get them into the forest and then hook somebody with the Kusaragama, pull them into a hidden blade as fast as possible. Or a named Fission Blast. Named Fission Blast also works. Uh, for the others, I'm honestly not sure what I do. Bunker is extremely solid, but I'd keep him in the middle. Maybe put him in turret mode at the edge of the, edge of the volcano. I'm, I'm not entirely certain what I'd do yeah. with Bunker. I, I definitely wouldn't have him go first, though. What I what I'd probably do is have Tachyon go first and try and blitz early on. Sure. But that's a risky play because that puts that, that dangerously overextends her. I'm yeah. not sure. I'm yeah. not sure. It's no, it, there's, it, it, honestly, with as strong as these teams are, I think there's a lot of right choices, and I think there's a lot of potentially wrong choices um, yeah. that, uh, I mean, rather, I think there are very few, like, absolutely wrong choices. I think that there are a lot of choices that are going to be less ideal, but it won't, um, I don't think a team is going to be crushed by playing less than ideal because no. the team is so strong it can support a lot of various play. Now... Well, yes and no. Like, one disastrous play, we've seen that in the past, where one bad turn can really swing the momentum of the game to the other team. Now, obviously, that involves them capitalizing on it, but it doesn't take much for the operative to capitalize on a, on a bad turn. That's true. That's or, very true. And to be honest, it doesn't take much for Beacon to do that either, which just gets up close and focus blast. Yeah, I mean, ta yeah, Tachyon, Beacon, Unity, um, I mean, not Unity, uh, Operative, Baron Blade, these are all characters who can absolutely punish someone who's out of position. Yeah. So. Now, I really hope that the, the free agents know about Baron Blade's Devious Disruptor. We've seen that absolutely crush teams before and with bunker for token generation they're gonna have to make sure that they're not overextending in terms of storing up tokens that's true that's true uh looks like they're starting to pick their power cards uh, operative knows what she's doing it looks like um i am eager to see what characters they're going to you know, be going for I'm, I'm normally all for the Kasaragama, and I'm normally all for the Hidden Blade as sort of an opening set for the Operative, but I'd actually like to see Poisons in play here. Sure, I would like to see Poisons, and also I don't think Kasaragama and Hidden Blade are a good um, opening set in this map because there's like you're not going to be interacting that way on the first turn. Unless you have a six movement. It's possible to get oh, sure. into the forest if you're devoted entirely to getting into that forest and going for a max range Kasaragama. Uh, what I'd honestly like to see, though, is, is I'd like to see someone 
give bunker boars rage. Oh sure. Because then all of those fancy uh, fancy missiles and rangedy things that he has, not so much. It's all melee where bunker is not. Uh, yeah, not I like exactly I, strong. I like boars rage on bunker. That's cute. I mean, it'll. If he can work around that, it could be fun. But uh, well, the there, one of the specific reasons that I thought it w would be interesting is because that actually gives them attack plus one tokens, right. which Baron Blade can then oh, sure. strip away. That's a fun combo. All right, so it looks like uh, we've got our turn order now. Um, so I can pull that up and we can look at it. Um, yes, Unity will be going first. Okay. So I'll be looking to see, so getting some bots in position potentially. Yeah. Uh, then after Unity on from Aqu Aqua Skull, we'll see the free agents playing Tachyon. So Tachyon's going to try to get some fast stuff right off the bat. Yep. Uh, then from Aqua Skull, we're back to the operative. See, that, that's not what I would have gone in the third spot. I would have gone with Operative first and really sure. go for that first round, Gusaragami, if you could possibly pull it off. Yeah, I'm interested to see where they go. Yep. Uh, after the Operative, we've got Beacon next. Um, after Beacon, we're over to Baron Blade, and then finally Bunker. So it's going to be an interesting play. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to how this develops. Also, we're, the characters are, are players are starting to pick their cards. Unity is going to be using Swiftbot and reconfiguration. Oh, I love that strategy. Right, excellent. so we're going to get Swiftbot going out there, get covering some ground, and then blowing up into something else. That's excellent. Um, Operative has Hidden Blade Strike and Kasarigama. So yep. standard sort of uh, loadout. And Baron Blade has the Displacing Teleporter and the Fission Blaster. Now, where Baron Blade is standing, it is possible for Baron Blade to. You can teleport right, right down over, to yeah. here. And I'm surprised that Baron Blade's not going first as a result uh, to try he to really teleport try. down to the hills. And then one, two, three, four, five, six. So he'd have to teleport to there. But yeah. But you could do it. It's interesting. Yeah. So that would be interesting. All right. And then on free agents, Beacon has piercing eye beams and Kriow. That's an odd choice with Kriow because that they don't synergize. Yeah, they yeah. specifically do not synergize, but they are both useful in their own right. And she, who knows what she'll be switching into at the beginning of her turn. Right. Um, Tachyon is currently using Synaptic Interruption and the world stands still. So she's got not, mobility and defense. That's not Tachyon's usual opener, and I'm it's actually true. rather glad about that. Yeah, I'm curious to see. <laughs> All right, and then Bunker is rocking artillery mode and auxiliary power source. So well, range and uh, utility, but we'll see. Can we br bring up auxiliary power source really quick? Because I'd like to get an eye, eye full of what that card actually does. Sure, no problem. So aux auxiliary power source, that's the uh, that's Bunker's card that gives him additional stuff. Uh, on, the sur uh, on the surge phase, it gives him an attack plus one token and an aim token. I really hope that Bunker's going for an early Omni Cannon because oh, yeah. if he's trying to store up those tokens, it's especially with Baron Blade with a Displacing Teleporter, that could murder the entire team. Baron Blade could just zip in close and uh, blast away. Yep. We shall see. All right. So it looks like they have all picked their powers as we've talked through all of them. Um, so uh, they are currently rolling their movement. So, and we are about ready to go. All right, so they're rolling some movements here. Let's see what we got. And this is actually particularly interesting because so, th because the starting speeds of these characters is really going to uh, <laughs> tell us how that first couple of round could unfold if the characters decide to use their full, the players use their full movement. Yeah. Uh, so somebody got a six there. All right. So let's see what I've got on the overhead. Nothing yet on movement. Should have some information on that soon. So now that they are actually rolling. I sincerely hope that the operative has that six because operative with high movement is just a joy to watch her work sure well beacon's got a movement of two that's less that's less joyful so beacon is flying pretty sluggishly um tachyon has a movement of four so that's not bad it's that's, a good thing she has a world stand still that's but certainly it, not the best tachyon movement we've not seen. so much um bunker's got a movement of five 
Oh, that's exciting. Yep. Unity's got a movement of six. The Operative's got a unit movement of six. And Baron Blade's got a movement of five. So it's high mobility. That's really, really good. That said, it looks like they're about ready to go. And um, Unity is going to be taking her first turn. So we are about ready to start. Okay, they're all noticing what each other's power cards are. But ultimately, it is time to start taking actions. Now what I do, yeah, I'd put it yeah, put as it far as possible. Yeah, I'm surprised that putting Unity all the way in the back like that means that... Uh, well, Unity doesn't necessarily mind being up on the hill, so I think that... Yeah. I don't. I don't think we'll see Unity threatened at all this whole game. What I'd really love to do, love to see, is Unity uh, go bots one to get down into the forest, go bots again to get into the middle of them, and then reconfigure with the turret bot just right, right, uh, right where it's going to do the most damage. Yeah, we shall see. Well, so one thing is, I'm not. I'm curious to see. Let's see. I'm going to pull up Unity's bots here because Swiftbot has a movement of six. So certainly one, two, three, four, five, six down into the jungle and one two three four five is all it takes to get in the middle of them so you really could get and unity get has there. first turn so i would love and she gets three actions so move move reconfigure into a turret bot this is exactly the what what, what i would i love to see in a first action yeah because if it works it's going to be glorious if it doesn't work it's going to be a complete and utter fiasco well and even if it doesn't work what it's going to be is it's going to be intimidating because yes. she can certainly move there and she can certainly reconfigure and she can certainly like nothing can stop her from putting a turret bot right in the middle of them and i i will freely admit that intimidation and shock value things don't always work, but boy, they're fun when they oh, do. Oh, I definitely enjoy them, yeah. That, that's why I think that the, the different the difference between drafting and picking is actually really balanced. All right. So, and so here we go. Swiftbot is possibly what he's going to be doing for Swiftbot. Let's see what Unity's thinking. Okay, so Swiftbot is moving, and let's see where Swiftbot's moving. One, two. Oh, come on, come on. Come on. That's only two. Three, no. sure. Three, four, oh, five. Oh. Five. Five? Okay. okay. And. I'll activate Swiftbot again uh, to dodge. Okay, oh, so Swiftbot okay. is dodging. That so is I'm, what I I'm done. guessing that Swiftbot's not going to be reconfiguring, but we shall see. You can't take the same action. You can't take the same action. Right. Um, so you, she, she could have moved all the way down into the jungle and then moved and attacked. Um, yeah, and then I, gotten the, the the reconfigure. It seems like a wasted opportunity because yeah. you really could have gotten just straight in the middle. Yeah, and gotten one, some two, damage three, out. four, five, six, and then the move and attack moves up to three hexes. So one, two, three. Could have gotten to the middle. Could have gotten to next to Beacon. Yeah, made an attack on Beacon and then exploded into. But Turbo. GoBots is unlimited, so. Yeah, but you can't use the same action multiple times on the bot. So okay, but even still, you but would, even still you could have pulled off an attack. Yeah, it would have been great. Oh yeah, would have worked. But uh, they they. they did, they played more defensively in mobility, so interesting. Tachyon's turn. What, let's see what, how this goes. Yes. So I get the defense plus one token here. Okay, so Tachyon's not switching her power cards, it looks like. She's, she's keeping Synaptic Interruption in the world stand still. It's interesting not seeing Tachyon immediately switch to pushing the limits and you know, or something spending like that. your hit points like water. Yeah. I'm just going to run up over here to the left side. So now, I really hope they don't fall into the trap of going after Unity's bots instead of Unity. But it well, Tycat's like going are, the other way. So. Okay. Uh, all right, so Tachyon's doing I'll some moving. That. Let's see. All right. Uh, I can sprint. Yeah. My so guess is the Tachyon's going to get in the forest and then dodge. Two, four, five. Yeah. Just a second. It's all sprint. Okay. So she sprints into the bushes and, and picks up a dodge token. A dodge token. Yep. There we go. 
So that is Tachyon's turn. Moving on, it is time for the operatives. So this is, I think, going to be indicative of how the rest of the game is going to go. Now, based, like, we've got some movement, we've got some, some dodges and things, but... Uh, what I would do is I would pick up strikes on ending and oh, sure. just walk into that forest and beat down Tachyon. Yeah, I mean, operative got has a movement of six, so she can walk right up to Tachyon. Tachyon is currently... Right. Yeah, she's got her synaptic interruption, so she does have a dodge token. If she dodges that attack, she'll, I mean, she'll be able to redirect it. I mean, yes, it's probably going to end up hurting the operative, but that's good for that's the true. operative. That's true. Because she can turn that oh, into... Oh, he's going to try and kiss Aragama, which he can't he do can't, because he can't, he can't see, her. see Tachyon. So he can't... Because Tachyon's in cover. So since Tachyon's standing there in the cover... Is it, What's the attack? Right, right. So... All right, so she's starting her turn over because she misunderstood uh, the, the cover situation. But, um, yeah, you can see out of cover, but you cannot see into cover unless you're adjacent, uh, as per always. Which is so, why hiding in cover can be extremely effective yes. when used judiciously. Right. So, um, that said, um, the operative is reconsidering actions. Okay. Come on, strikes on ending. Now I this is not what I'd usually do, but I'd consider I'd consider going into the higher like terrain, Sarayama even though it's going to make your, yep. even though it's going to make your life harder, if only because then you could do an undivided attention to bunker on the next turn. Cool. Okay, so um, the operative is currently running with hidden blade strike and strikes on ending. She moves into Tachyon and is rolling her attack dice. Now we'll see what Tachyon does about that. She does have the dodge. The attack came up uh, five five three three, and uh, since the only Autumn is on twos, two fives and two threes are going to Tachyon. It's a good hit, potentially. Now Tachyon. Well. Yeah, so Tachyon's dodging. And he's got that dodge token if he wants to. Or I'm sorry, he's got that defense plus one token if the, these don't quite pass. All right, so he blocks. So that's three sixes since he dodged, so he blocks three of it and takes one damage. Well, you can still use that defense plus one token. Oh, that's true. And if you use that defense plus one, you need to block all of it and then use this, uh, can use an aptic interruption to throw them right all back. Right back yeah. That's really good. Now, honestly, if I was the operative, I'd just block one of them and yeah, yeah. keep those two hit points. Now, it's an aptic interruption. Another strike for my Tom No, hold on, hold on. That was 5533. Five, three, three. Yeah, that was 5533. So, the operative blocks five five blocks two of it, so it take two damage. I'd, I'd let that third one go through. Yeah. And I'll actually choose to not climb. Oh hey! Hey, nice. I wonder if they can hear us. Uh, <laughs> so this person has clearly studied the, the operative at least a bit, and um, this is excellent. This is excellent because that means that next uh, no more no more dodge no more. This time I get use six dice because exactly uh, frenzy. Yes. And okay, the so two is anonymous, so it goes away. So, so it's four threes uh, four and a four. And a four coming at. Sakyan is going to take some hurt. Yeah. I'm really interested to see the difference between play between today and tomorrow. Oh. Yeah, and that and is Tachyon down. Yeah. 
You take four damage. Boom. That is a first round, third turn incapacitation for Team Aqua Skull. Coming out strong, showing us once again why the operative is so terrifying. That is exactly how I, I love watching the operative play. And see, she got to do that amazing attack and that wonderful action because she responded to Tachyon. Tachyon moved up and the operative responded since she went after Tachyon. I'm not going to deny that that's <laughs> what happened. <laughs> But I still think that Unity could have pulled off something oh, exciting. I absolutely agree. I think first. that if Unity had gone all, put put that bot out there in their face, that would have dictated uh, what Tachyon had done on her turn. Yeah. And she would not have been so likely to just dive through the, uh, the danger zone. <laughs> all right. So that is now time to for Beacon to shine. Let's see what Beacon has. Now, honestly, Beacon has a movement of two, so that's... It's not so good. That's not so good. Yeah. What I would think about doing is swapping out one of her powers for bolstering team up. Oh, sure. And giving Bunkro an action. Yeah. Because at that point, she can she can sprint. Oh, I'm free. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, it was in brackets. I didn't even... Okay. All right. Well, then. Um, so it looks like Beacon's not switching out any of her cards. But She's thinking about it, though. See, my guess is because of what the operative just did, Beacon is going to turtle up and, and try not to do anything to well, attract I'm, attention. Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty pleased with the, the, operative, the, the operative player there. I yeah. mean, that was a good move in, make a couple attacks, hit hard. Like, that's, that is an exciting start. With that movement of five, what I I, I I would let Bunker move five and just get within range of the operative to just power her down. Yeah. Well, at this point, let's see. If Bunker moved up five, one, two, three, four, five, couldn't quite get to um, the cover space or anything there. No. But, right. but it would get to the point where operative, the operative would be within range of another move on Bunker's turn. Yeah. And then... If the, if the operative went down fast, you might actually have a shot at Baron Blade. I think you could get in position there where you could see both the operative and Baron Blade. Uh, you could not. One, two, three, four, five, unfortunately. With the second with move. The second move. Yes, with the second move. Bunker's turn, Bunker yeah. moves five. Yeah, so with the second move, you could move up to here and then make one attack adjacently to the operative and another one against Baron Blade, although the operative currently is rolling five defense dice. That's true, but with that auxiliary power source, that's why that's, that's you a free have aim. those things. Yep, free aim, free attack plus one token. So I think I'm going to... All right, so looks like is Beacon switching a card? Nope. Still looking with piercing eye beams and Kriao there. See, this to me seems like a player who's got this strategy in mind and mm -hmm. really wants to make it work, even if it's not necessarily the best one for the situation. I'm going to move. I'm going to keep my my cards. So the first action is to move. She moves to two. Right next to Bunker. Oh, and then she's sprinting too. Okay. And that's Beacon. Beacon's turn. That's my turn. Okay. She rolls a new action. Uh, interestingly, the operative rolled a movement of three on her last turn. So that is uh, it's going to be a pretty slow operative, but she does go after Tachyon. So that might help. We'll see. And if she can step out of the woods or even step forward to the edge of the woods, she can Kasurigama beacon in close. Now, Baron Blade is a movement of five currently. Mm -hmm. What I'd really like to see is Baron Blade displacing teleporter straight down yep. and then move to into position for a max range. Actually, not a max range vision blast because he doesn't have, he doesn't have an, enough He doesn't have an aim. aim. Right. But still, a high, a high dice roll vision blast. I just trust in luck at that point. If, if there's a difference in elevation, that, that's how good you have to work. So if it was like a three and one force space, what's the Actually, okay. You could, you could teleport. Baron Blade could teleport right here. Right up above the, right up above Unity, or uh, Tachyon yeah, and, and the Yeah, and then be operative. one, two, three, four, five away from Beacon. Oh, that's perfect. And yeah. then aim and Fission Blast. There we go. And so actually, you could get one further away and then do a six. You could. I, I would probably go ahead and go for the five, the aimed five dot. Beacon Although has being enough, Beacon be has enough hit points, I would go for the six. And well, and being further away from Tachyon when she stands up. Ah, either way, on Tachyon's turn, she should stand up and um, sprint, sprint, punch her opponent to yeah. the ground. Should. Should. 
and definitely not have that be the operative because rolling five dice or you know, three dice against five is... I'd be tempted to go against the operative because if you take a push in the limit so you get an extra turn after your turn, you could do those, those attacks make the, uh, and take an extra turn and when, on your next turn uh, pick up push in the limits and put down Sucker Punch. You just need one damage. The problem is, is the operative still has Hidden Blade Strike. Oh, so yeah. Sprint, sprint, punch sprint Punching is dangerous. It's a very bad idea. Yeah, no, that's a good point. I forgot about Hidden Blade Strike there. So we removed the two ones. So okay, so he, he just plays into the aimed. <laughs> Meanwhile, they do exactly what we keep telling them to do. <laughs> we're just we're just goofing around over here. And the fission blaster. So it's an aimed fission blaster at range five. One six. All right. So damage on beacon. Beacon takes two damage. That's a good start. Okay. All right. So. Ooh. Wow, <laughs> Baron okay. Blade. The Baron ain't going nowhere. I mean, to be fair, Baron Blade does have a teleporter and is really happy with his positioning. Yeah. But that's a rough movement roll. I mean, anytime you roll double ones, that's not what you wanted, probably. I, I mean, honestly, doing exactly what he did again, except maybe climbing in the Saber battle suit for his next oh, turn. Oh, sure. It's not a bad call. All right, so now it is Bunker's turn. Does Bunker actually have a point of damage on him? Where did that damage come from? All right, so Bunker, yeah, there we go. There was just a graphical glitch. Anyway, Bunker has no damage and is about to start his turn. Um, Baron Blade's square in front of him, but pretty far away. Although he does have, uh, Bunker is using the, the auxiliary, or the artillery mode right now. You can change power card if you want. You can change power card if you want. Get some reach plus three, let's see. One, two, three, four, five. From there, you could just blast away merrily, uh, drop a grenade on uh, the operative, uh, shoot a yeah. flat cannon at, uh, at Baron Blade. That's you can honestly what I'd do. Yeah, I'd probably just leave the loadout, what he's currently got. Oh, no, I'd switch, uh, I'd switch the auxiliary power source for a grenade launcher. No, actually, I wouldn't. I would switch the artillery mode for grenade launcher. Because artillery mode doesn't work with grenade launcher. Well, that yeah. and also you're you're gonna you, you want to hit you want to try to grenade launch the operative and flat cannon and a baron blade and the attack plus one and the aim token is more valuable in my opinion than the reach plus three and the auto miss reroll. But the only reason you'd be able to get to baron blade. No, oh, no, no, if he moves, if yeah, he moves, yeah, because no, you have totally to. Right. He's got, baron bunker's got a speed of five right now. Yeah, you got to take advantage of it. Astounding, like <laughs> when you when you have Apparently a movement of five. Apparently, he installed wheels. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> All right, so Bunker's picking up. So uh, Bunker did, looks like, yeah, Bunker left his okay, cards the so same. So. Oh, this. Okay, moves to there. Let's see, one, two, three, four. Could still grenade launch Unity, but doesn't have a grenade launcher. Yeah, so it looks like it's going to be going straight for the Baron. He's using his aim against the Baron Blade. I'll attack flat cannon. And he's using the flat cannon. Yeah. All right. So, and he's at reach plus three, so even though the range is right in two, three, four, five, um, it's only range of two. Yeah. Now, it's, oh, it's a solid, a solid attack, but... While your eight pieces, twos go away. Which is five. So, four fives going up against Baron Blade. So it's not going to kill him, but that's pretty strong. Oh, and he could spin that attack plus one token. Which, I, there's no reason not to. No, you're not going to build up to Omni Cannon. You don't have time. And if, if there's any potential of, of taking someone out if they don't roll well, All right. always do it. He's rolling one more, and it's a five. Okay, <laughs> All right, five fives going against Baron Blade. If Baron Blade doesn't roll at least one, five, or six, that is going to be a down for the free agents. And she rolls one six. So Baron Blade is left at one health. Hey, but that's not an incapacitation. Absolutely. All right. And that is the end of round one. Bunker rolls a new movement. Let's see how fast Bunker is this time. My two actions. I will roll for movement, get back up, and then I'll be able to take the other one. So Unity is in a bit of a problem right now because with... She's so far away from the action. Yeah. Wow! Bunker's speed is six uh, now. I don't know if I've ever seen that. Bunker's gone turn. from a speed of five to a speed of six. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. I think we know what happened to Turret Bot's tank tread. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so it's back around to Unity's turn. Yeah, I mean, if I were her, maybe I would go ahead and switch Swiftbot out for a different bot just to pick that robot up, because I don't know what it's doing over there. Um, I'm not so sure. Oh, she's I leaving her cards out, so Swiftbot. 
Six. Good. Well, and now you could make that move, that sprint, attack. Sprint and then reconfigure. You don't. Uh, oh no no you don't sprint you make the attack so she moves oh, forward right, and hits. Oh right. Yeah yeah yeah. Moves forward and hits and then reconfigure. Yeah totally. Oh right. no Unity's moving. That's two. And then I will sprint. I wonder if Unity is going to try oh, for an some shockwave of some of some kind. All right so Unity moved and then you uh, sprinted. Go box. Then so yeah, okay. So Unity, uh, GoBots, and then move. Hasn't ter taken her third action yet. So go, go, Unity still has a third action. I, I can't help but think that the Unity player is trying to do something extremely clever with an arcing shockwave, and I'm I mean, not maybe certain that's the best move. Sure, best I mean, option. if you put SwiftBot around here, you could okay, do that. But I think that's less. Again, and move SwiftBot. Okay. Activate Swiftbot's uh, attack. Okay, so Swiftbot's going to move one, two, three, probably go after Beacon. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Attacking with six. Although, honestly, I, I'd have moved one more. Can't. It's up to three. It's up to three. Okay. Yep. Look, it's right there on the screen. So it so is. I'm sorry, it's a three. Yeah, okay. I, I accidentally read the. Yes. All right, so. I'm really not sure why Unity moved, though. I don't know either. Okay, and so the two goes away, so it's two fives coming up against Beacon. Beacon does not have any of her defensive cards, so she just rolls three defense dice. And that swift bot can come off the screen. And blocks all of it, no problem. Beautiful defense rolling there. And that is the turn of Unity. So now we're on to Tachyon. She stands Stand back, back up. up. Full health. Yeah. I'd honestly go after Baron Blade yeah. and then have yeah. that dictate what your next move is. Yeah. Um, would you sucker punch Baron Blade, or would you use? You know what? No, I'd put down pushing the limits. Yeah. As as fun as sucker punch is, having the option of going after the operative next. Operative got that, that mid blade strike. Even you know with what? it. I would pick up. Uh, I would pick up. Uh, uh, pushing the limits. Go down after Beacon, and then. Beacon's uh, on their team. Or not after Beacon. Um, actually, yeah. Go go after Baron Blade. Try to kill him off, and then switch to the world stand still and tries to get over to take out Unity. I like that idea. Yeah. Yeah. So Tachyon's rolling a new movement for her new turn and picking one card. Um, movement's five, so it's way better than the uh, four she was working with earlier. It's only one better, and yet that's really notable. Um, but still... The fact that Bunker has been consistently faster than Tachyon in this game is really concerning. Tachyon's going to have to be very, very careful around the operative, though, because one misstep means an awful lot of nasty coming at her. But, uh, but my guess is Baron Blade's going to get knocked down this turn. I should hope so. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. You, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Going after Baron Blade, I would, yeah. I would probably switch up at this point, f uh, pull up for pushing the limits, regardless. Taking out a bot does not count as a knockout, right? Right. Uh, so Tachyon, that's a good, I mean, that's a pretty... Looks like... It looks like uh, we're going for unrelenting momentum. Unrelentum. Unrelentum? Yeah. So this, in theory, also works with... That sounds like something that you'd fight over in an alien world if you were yes. a mining corporation. Okay. Yep. Okay, so the nice thing about unrelenting momentum is that whatever it went, that Tachyon, which if she does some, the same thing twice in a row, she does it the third time for free. Second time in a turn, she would take that... So hopefully she's going to sprint, punch... Sprint failed to punch. Ah, that's not gonna. She's not gonna be able to get to Unity, but she can go after. Yeah, she's gonna start with the nimble strike. She should have started with the. She started the nimble strike, so she's just going straight up after the operative. If she doesn't move, the hidden blade doesn't. Not You could. Uh, you could nimble strike the operative. Yeah. And then sprint oh, that's true. Baron blade, sprint Baron Blade. Sprint Baron Blade. Sprint Baron Blade. Sprint Baron blade. That's true. Baron blade. Or keep sprinting at the operative the with uh, right. no... No, you have to move. You have to move. You have to move. I see. But you don't necessarily have to move to the full two. Mm, oh, one, so two, two, one, and the two twos are the oh, auto misses. That's, that's just sad. By definition, you'll miss that attack anyway. Yeah. It doesn't matter. So the operative is rolling five defense dice because of the uh, Dragon Fury. So, yep. There yeah. you go. Okay. Hey, rolled at least a one. All right, Tachyon's got two actions left. Now get out of there before the Hidden Blade Strike knocks you down. Yep. I mean, she's back at full health. She is, but... Yep. It's Tachyon pretty, at it's low health is far less effective than Tachyon's Oh, so she's her aiming for her second action, attack. so she can't possibly yeah. take advantage of Unrelentum at this point. Unless she does another Nimble Strike. 
Yeah, it doesn't it's twice say in a row. That. It doesn't say twice in a row, does it? I thought it did, but I could be wrong. Um, it takes its second time, second time in a turn. So no, it's totally fine. So she, so she takes nimble strike. So she will get a third nimble strike. So, um, so she is aiming the nimble strike. And what was the attack roll on that aimed nimble strike? Not enough. Oh, oh. oh, apparently the operative. Oh, very down. good. So very good. Guess. Yeah, I never saw that roll, but it doesn't matter. It seemed to work. And so the operative actually was dropped by that. Yes, because I can't attack apparently. So and you're, yeah, unfortunately, that's it. Uh, operatives, operative, yeah, you attack on's done. So there's no attacking now. There's now, if I was the operative standing back up, which is exactly what's right. going to happen, uh, strikes on ending, Tonfun Blade, Tonfun Blade, Tonfun Blade. Unquestionably. But we'll see. Yeah, I, I, don't I, take our advice. I, I think that the, I think that's what we're going to see is seeing that the operative. Um, Although, uh, uh, even though I'm saying that, what you could do, and and I'd like to see this happen, is have the operative move and then attack both bunker and beacon simultaneously with a tonfin blade strike. Okay. Because if she moves, it'll be a range penalty, but it's still seems That's like right. a fun thing to do. So the operative stands up, gains new health, um, rolls a new movement, and plays a strikes on ending. Movement of four. That's plenty. Since Especially she's not moving for standing this still and hitting Tachyon. I mean, heck, it might be one attack on Tachyon if it's really well rolled, and then a move of one, two, three, four, and, and another strikes yeah. on ending. Yeah, yeah. Um, the game is tied up, and yet it seems like this is going to be a pretty dominant turn here. Well, once uh, like Aqua Skull has demonstrated, you know, once again that complete and utter aggression, especially is, with the operative, especially with the operative, but with the operative and Baron Blade, just going full offense is an incredibly powerful strategy. Oh yeah. I remove the one two, so three six is coming to attack on. She, she, she aimed it. Yes. So that I guess her, the operative's first action was an aim, and the second action was uh, the. Was the Tonfoot Tonfoot blade. blade and oh, Tachyon blocks Tachyon one of it. Survives um, with well, one with two hit points left. Right. So and Tonfoot Blader again. Tonfoot Blade again. On and, and this one's and obviously not aimed, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. Oh, oh six six one. So two sixes and a one attack on. So two sixes. So Tachyon are has to roll to a one. Or Tachyon has to roll a six. And she doesn't. That is a second incapacitation. Aqua Skull has their second. They only need one more incapacitation. That said, Baron Blade is on his literal last leg. Yes. So uh, we'll see. And if Beacon can capitalize on it, that's great. But well, what's Beacon's movement currently? Uh, Beacon currently is sitting. I it being slow. No, yeah, no. It's, it, the Beacon's movement is currently five. It's very okay. good. Uh, uh, Baron Blade had the movement of one. But that's fine. He's in his uh, saber battle suit right now. So. Nope. Baron Blade's currently sitting on the dip Displacing Teleporter and the Fission Blaster. Now, you don't need line of sight for... You, you don't need... Uh, no, can't do that. If there's any space in between those that's I, higher than either of you... I'd honestly just fly up next to Baron Blade and focus eye beams him. That's a good just call. completely ridiculously overwhelm him. Yep, yep. And it means that when Baron Blade stands back up, he would have to move to get into Fission Blaster, to an ideal Fission Blaster range. Now, the other thing you can do is bolster and team up Bunker, so Bunker can use that ridiculous movement to get in range of Unity. And then on Bunker's turn, Bunker just unloads at everyone. Because uh, with a six movement, so Bunker could get. The force, even though it's a level one. With, with a six movement, Bunker could get in between Baron Blade and the operative, although the hidden blade strike is not out. So you could get in between them and then potentially see Unity as well with a grenade launcher. So get into turret mode, just shoot everything in sight. But uh, yeah. but I, I just really like to, to see going after the Baron, honestly. So Beacon's trying to do some goofy things. She's asking about if she can Cree out from across the map, if she can do see through the forest at elevation at range. Like, I get that there's some cool things she's trying, but I really... Beacon is so strong. She hits super hard. She has all sorts of great abilities. I don't know why she's not just closing the distance and taking somebody down. There There's a time for an elegant waltz, and there's time for, like, a rambunctious swing dance. Now is the time to go in and boogie. And then this is the other hex. That was a very strange strange metaphor, but I'm still gonna go with it. 
Well, this says I get to attack two different targets. Uh, one of those targets has to be which, it would be which you could do. Which yep. you could do. Yep. yep. So what? But honestly, you just move and then atomic glare them both. I mean, it's not the ideal thing because the Baron could possibly survive it, but right. I, it's still a cool idea. I don't know why she doesn't just go to that same space she was talking about and Kriow, um, uh, yeah, the operative and, and Baron Blade. That would certainly work. Yeah, I mean, she's got... She, well, I mean, I could just do it right here. Then. Oh, yeah, the cover, the, the cover is blocking line of sight to Baron Blade there. That's true. Yeah. Take, well, if you were adjacent to... You're if adjacent you were directly in between them... Yeah, if you're directly in between them, you could you hit could, both of them. And you could, yeah, the Kriya would still apply. Yeah, because, but yeah, you don't even need the Kriya at that point. But the Kriya rolls more... Yeah. Does the Kriya roll, roll more dice? No. That doesn't work that Can you do what you were saying before? Like, can you be here? No, because I can't... I wouldn't be able to attack up the level. A lot of theory crafting. Roll, Kriya rolls five dice, but it misses on threes and four. So... So if I make my movement one, two, three, uh, honestly, four, five. This there we go. There we go. So he, he's getting in between them. Here we go. Okay. So Beacon's first move is getting there. I have to make. I mean, this has to be clutch. Right. Clutch. Otherwise, we're we take out Baron Blade. We don't. Right. And Beacon's currently using the cards Kriao and Next Evolution. So Next Evolution is the one that's going to. The one that's going to allow in to uh, allow her to hit an adjacent target. So she's Kriowing. I need two more. She's Kriowing both targets simultaneously. Essentially, next right. Evolution. All right. So. Oh, that is a. Well, the Baron still has to roll a six. So Baron Blade rolls. Yeah, Baron Blade rolls defense against six. All right. And. And, and oh, Baron, Baron defends, and the operative has to block it at six. And I would, I, I you know what I would. Being at full health is fine. I, being at four health, you're in kind of danger. We'll, we'll see what she happens. Doesn't anyway, so right. Correct. She takes the damage. Hey, so Beacon got one point of damage through. That said, she also spelled the doom of her house because I yeah. feel like Baron Blade at this point. This, this is why I, I, I really would have just gone for the. Uh, one, two, three, diabetes. four, five. She's five. Baron Blade is currently five away from Bunker. Um, Bunker's a full health and has a high defense, but an, I think an aimed fission blast is and an aimed fission blast what followed by a teleport actually, over here. I would teleport <laughs> over there first and then go after Beacon with an aimed. Fission oh sure, blast. you could teleport. Well, let's see. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, you could teleport to her, teleport to Baron Blade's starting location and then do an aimed fission blast yeah. against Beacon. At this point, if Aqua Skull can knock, it can get a KO with that turn. Okay, switched into a battle suit. Yeah. That's fine. And for your, your ability, you get. And she gets a, a and she, what is she going to pick up? I would get a plus one attack. Att attack plus one. That's the right choice. My guess is aim and slash burn. Oh, okay. Yeah, I like it. And maybe if you're feeling saucy, you know, go for a dodge token for sure. perhaps additional. She's picking survival. up aim for her first action. And she's aiming at a beacon. If I'd hurt, if I were her, I might sprint first for the range, but you know, it's fine. All right, and so, yeah, there we go. Well, I mean, in essence, it doesn't matter because uh, you you change everything for aim. Okay, after. so that. Well, in essence, yes, it really doesn't matter. Right, because that aim was entirely unnecessary, and she has the attack plus one, which she's going to roll. So the attack plus one token is used up, and that gives her... Oh, well, it's an auto miss. Yeah. Four fives, or four sixes, coming at Beacon. If Beacon doesn't roll one six at least, then that is game, here and now. I... And yeah, that, that is, is a game. victory. Aqua wow. Skull has cinched excellent operative play and excellent Baron play, Baron play play. And actually, the Unity was just kind of goofing around. I don't think that the Unity player is necessarily a bad player, but she was trying to, or he rather, was trying to, with the character Unity, who is a girl, uh, do a goofy strategy with moving uh, the Swift bot around the side and having reconfigure Maybe and never using it. Reconfigure or an arcing shockwave or something. Right. Like, and and even still. Um, the operative and Baron Blade's play was precise. It was good. It was risky. Baron Blade sitting there at one hit point oh, says, yeah. fine, oh, yeah. I'm not scared. Like, that was really excellent play. I, I think there was excellent play on the part of both teams. Well, that, that's the, that's the, the reason why hyper-aggressive play can work. Because absolutely. if you're willing to risk everything to knock someone down before they can get to you, 
they, when they stand back up, they have to. They, they have, have to focus to make on that you. call. They have yeah. to focus, and if if they slip up even a little, well, the sure momentum enough, keeps going. Yeah, and like Tachyon stood up and knocked down the operative. Good job. Yes, but that was their one incapacitation, yeah. and um, the, the, the the that first incapacitation bonus. That's why sometimes having first turn is really is really advantageous. So really, you're, you're gonna say that again? <laughs> yeah, I'm okay. gonna say that to you. Okay. I still think you should have second. But you know uh, what? Well. I, th that's one of the things. That's one of the things I like about casting with you, Chris, is that you're right about things. You know a lot about it stuff, and yet, and occasionally we disagree. Right. And occasionally I'm right, and occasionally you're less right. I, no, that never happens. That never. Okay. We'll be back in just a few minutes with another round. Stay right here.